Hello everyone and welcome back to more for the 2024 Stoneburner Open for Dune Imperium Uprising. I'm your host and commentator, The Black Shadow, now back more or less fully to full health. Again, apologies uh, for not a ton of videos coming on the channel over the past week or so. Uh, things have been more than eventful for us here at Hidden Assets uh, with health issues, tech problems, it's... It's been a rough old week, but uh, things are looking to progress now. Uh, and I myself have got several games lined up for me to do commentary over the next several days. So I'll be hoping to get these done uh, and get them up live for you guys as soon as possible. So do thank everyone here for their patience, and I hope now that I'm a bit more about myself as well, I'll be able to give you guys a better job on commentary too. Given the fact that we haven't been able to cover a ton over the past week or so, it means that a lot of the groups have started kind of getting towards the middle or even some of the end stages of their time in the tournament. And today we're looking at Group N. Here is a look at the table. We have got both H and you got Franked playing today. Uh, they'll be joined by SPE Creep and I has Saki. You got Franked is, of course, a name you may recall. Uh, previous finalist in the Mr. Beast Oon Invitationals uh, that have been held over in North Carolina. Uh, Frank got third place of laws in the first competition um, and probably was on course for a decent run in the second one until I ended up putting him out in the final group game uh, it was a crazy match with him uh, lsr and i believe it was holy boss as well uh, frank very very tough player always hard working never ever gives up does from my noticing tend to go towards a much more combat oriented leader i think he has a much more natural preference that feels a lot more comfortable with that but it has been shown to mix it up with a more faction heavy style every now and again but usually he's going to have a pretty heavy combat presence on the table He's going to be joined by H in this one, who currently tops the table with nine points from two games. Reminder, it is six, three, two, one point structure, and it is the top two from each group will go through direct to the quarterfinals with third, fourth, and fifth places having to go through an additional wildcard round to make it. So for both H and Frank, they'll feel if they can make a victory in this match today uh, that they've got themselves one foot in the door in the quarterfinals. Uh, but it's going to be, you know, tough. And of course, it's going to be a very, very swingy game uh, for Creep and Ayasaki as well. Well, not the best of the starts. Creep got himself a second place in his first get and only game that he's played, which wasn't too bad. Uh, both of them know that they're going to need to uh, try and get a win somewhere between, especially Ayasaki, who pretty much feels he's going to have to win this game to get himself back in contention for any degree of qualification. If he doesn't win it, even getting a second place, it's going to be all down to his last match. So a lot of pressure on him in this one. Okay, and so we get ourselves ready for the match here. And for once, it's not the red player who is the first pick, uh, as it is randomized. It will be blue to pick first. Hell's Angel, also SP creep, which means... Right, I can't be sat in this. Oops, hold on. There you go. That should all be fine now. <laughs> Give me two secs. Uh, put me in the seat there. Interesting. Uh, did I do it accidentally? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyways, it will be H2 pick first. Let's look at the, uh, the stuff here. <laughs> Challenger appears at that. Surprise! No. Uh, so opening text here, we've got Harvest the free Spice of Free Costa. Easy enough to fulfill, so we will go for to try and get an early Hagger base. And Sodokar, uh, recall contract. I do think it's actually pretty good. Just having the education action makes Sodokar a much more appetizing spot. Um, is there anything decent to pair with it here? Maybe some in high places could see that. Uh, some decent cards here. Tarni is very, very popular. Being able to retreat troops, keep the swords, obviously, is very strong. So for somebody that's like Gurney Halleck, for example, it's very dangerous. Spacing gear is always popular. Ecological, I like the bond. I'm less fan of the agent ability. High places is a very, very strong card and will be highly desirable. And we got Trend Dark. This is a card I can't work out if I like this card or not. The reveal's decent, but actually getting the value from the agent, I do think is a bit awkward sometimes. So... We'll see how things go. As for our leaders, here are the seven. Uh, there is no Fade Ramfer, and there is no... Who's the other person that we're missing? No Staban. No, I don't think Staban would have picked here anyways. So, uh, likely going to see a lot of Gurney. Might well see Margo trying to pick up high places. China's going to be pretty busy. Uh, I think pretty much anyone here is viable in some form or another. So, I think you can rock and roll here. So, players are now off to start picking their leaders. Remember, this is reverse drafting, but it's hidden. So players will not know what's going to be taken here. Gurney taken by H in fourth. Not a surprise. The question is, is anyone going to make any early reveals for Charney or in high places? They're kind of like tempting cards, aren't they? They're, 
the cards that you definitely would like maybe for like third or fourth spot if they don't feel they've got a very good second action they might opt to early reveal kind of hard for first or second i think to justify no reveal if there's decent faction spots they can visit um and i'll just have to accept with that and to be fair a card like you know space and guild's favor um isn't a bad uh consolation prize ecological like if you can get the bond for ecological with the the water there like this is a fantastic tribalizing card this combined with the likes of you know like uh you know long the fighters that sort of thing incredibly incredibly powerful while deep in third position, not a huge surprise. Again, wanting to get his ring to try and draw and pick up the likes of Charney. Irulan taken by Frank for a third game in a row. He played Irulan in both his other two matches here. Winning one, coming third in the second. Might have a bit of a niche in here, truthfully. No fade round for those. So Hell's going to have to uh, pick a more... Uh, yeah, Margo was my suspicion. And that is exactly what we see here. Okay, then. So let's get ourselves off to the races here. Opening combat is going to be the Fopter Skirmish. So Intrigues and Cash, but no pairing immediately here, which is going to make things a bit funky. Margo has drawn Double Dagger, Double Dune, and Convincing. So Accept Contract seems likely. Irulan has pulled both Faction Cards and Ring, which is a little awkward. Wadi with Faction and Ring will be happy. And Gurney have only Seek Allies and not all else going on. So a couple of tricky opening hands here. Margo with a pretty rough draw is probably going to have to just go accept contract. I don't see a ton else what you can do here, but it's not great contracts, though. Um, so difficult spot. Is there ever a world you just go, like, high council first um, or assembly hall? I think accept contract you have to do, try and pull something. Does pull the ring. I think that's reasonable. Deliver supplies come next, which is pretty nice. So Frank's got a variety of choices here. It's kind of hard to turn down friend kit when it's there. Um, I also don't mind it as well, just that deck cycle and the chance to get, like, cards in. There's a lot of good stuff out there. It's kind of... It's hard not to use Seek Allies at Friend Kit. You're kind of forced into it. He'll probably put in one, if not two. Just the one. The question is, does he ring his dagger out now? Or does he use his other Diplo? That's that's a good question, and that's one I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. Wadi, I assume, will hit Desert Tactics and does. No surprises there. But again, no pump here available off the skirmish. It's a bit tricky. Is he going to trash a convincing to protect Dune Desert Planet? He's really thinking about it. I think you can get rid of one Dune Desert Planet. But there's not a lot. Of, there is some triangle access out there on the row. I think convincing is a little, little ludicrous. He's a bit worried about trashing any cards and pulling his dagger off his ring. That's what he's worried about here. And he wants to get make sure he's got five. So he might even go assembly hall, perhaps. Just limps. Gurney with tricky hands still. Deliver supplies. Looks like a good place to go. Working out from there. Yep. Start building that up. I think that looks pretty solid. Margo's got a ring. And double daggers. So getting involved here is very attractive. Um, you'd have to probably go in Arakeen, though. Remember, it's, uh, Diplo, Recon, um, Seek Allies, and Convincing. There's only really one of those cards she really wants to find, and that's the Convincing. Dune would be, like, so be, I guess. But you've got your ring. You kind of have to use it Arakeen and kind of spin a little bit here. Absolutely binks it with Convincing Argument. Best physical draw. Absolutely huge. I'd be putting in probably two troops here. I think two's plenty fine. Absolutely binks it. What a draw there for um, for, for Margot. Ilan will take out the dagger. Pulls um, go, go to ground. Not a bad little intrigue to have early game. So obviously keeping the five persuasion. I think this is probably the right call over Diplo. I think you can afford to skip it this once. I think this is fine. So Muad'Dib has got a variety of options here. If he wants to win the fight, he can. Gurney could have definitely have his ring, but is he going to go that heavy into this? I mean, he might put in the free just so he uh, takes it down sort of cheaply. Like, I'd be very concerned of Gurney's ring here. It's an easy move to, like, you know, spice refinery or something like that. Um, I think Mwadi wanted to go assembly hall, which is why he's going to just reveal and call it a day and make sure to get Charney. Doesn't want to take the risk. I can understand that. We'll master that next card up here. And now it's off to Gurney, who's got four persuasion. No way to five, so you might as well take an action here. Do you just go Hagger Basin and or Imperial Basin and just uh, put in a couple of troops? 
I think you've got to put in at least one troop here and take that intrigue away from uh, Muad'Dib. I think that's pretty mandatory. And maybe if you're lucky, Irulan also doesn't have a dagger and they get nothing, which is exactly what's going to happen here. Putting in two is tempting, but I think I think this is fine. I think one troop is totally okay here. Two, you can just to guarantee it. But I think I think one would have been fine. So. And of course, Margo concerned the fact he's got double daggers, but doesn't. Anyways, uh, Margo's got five. High places will be surely off to Espionage. Uh, the Benny Jesuit spy surely is the place to send this. Margo is a place she really wants to hit very heavily. Obviously, pairs with the faction with the spy, but it's in high place. It's gotta be a Benny Jesuit spy. Nothing else. I'd be really surprised at anything. Maybe spacing spy once in the blue moon, but surely Bene Gesserit spy is the more natural place. But ops decide to go the other way around. So is research station being threatened here next round? Looks like that might be what's going on here. Your alarm will Jake spacing's guild favor. Um, leaving free for Gurney. Northern Wall Master, I suspect, will be taken in is. A couple of decent cards, though. Meek Keeper is also pretty decent. Ben Operative now out there. A couple of decent cards. Margo will take the conflict down. Gurney will pick up the Intrigue in two. And um, so, interesting. Irulan decides to retreat to get the Spy on the Benny Jester. Happy to give Muad'Dib the Intrigue, which I, I think I agree with. I think if Irulan's not going to butt that up, you absolutely have to get there. I do think that's a mistake from Blue. I think you have to block Bene Gesserit up. It's such an it's going to be a really important place in this game here. I think giving that up there is probably not correct. But never mind. We'll see how things play out. Could could live to regret that. Contingency for Wardeeb's pretty nice. Gurney picks up the Fopter matching uh end game, which obviously he can't get right now. Spice's power for uh Margo in round one is absolutely enormous. That is an insane pull. She could legitimately now consider going research. She's pulled high places. Wow, she's pulled high places. And now she's got problems. Now she's got problems here. Irulan's just going to hit deliver supplies and draw. Bit of a tricky hand. Wadi will he hitting the Fremen and going Siege here and taking this conflict down. So match as well here at Spice for Fire. This is a massive uh, combat here from Wadi. With contingency, knows he's taken it down. Huge, huge pull for him here. But Gurney is got his ring. And this also matches for Gurney as well. So is Gurney going to get himself dempted into this? Hard to just justify unless he just it blasts away at research station. Even that doesn't feel great. Gurney's got choices. Could go Desert Tactics, trash, his, trash the dagger out. I actually don't mind Desert Tactics round two when you can get rid of that dagger out of your hand. But he might opt to go for the uh, Diver Supplies money contract, which is exactly what he does. He's definitely got intentions of trying to go deep desert shipping here. Looks like that's the rough plan for Gurney Halleck here. So Margot's got all her faction access. Rejoining in the high place is a little bit awkward, obviously. What about that next round? No access to Espionage. Desert Tactics is available. And Secrets. It's the only place she can go here. Just going to take the spice and just take the cash here. So she's hoping to get the Secrets by the looks of it. Is she? Is Margot Fenring ever playing Spice's power here to take this combat away from Wadib? I don't know. I don't know. It seems pretty wild. Irulan's at 5 Persuasion, eyeing up what to do here. An early reveal? Doesn't feel the best, but Benny Jeffrey's operative is in the row, and you've got the spy there. Like, I don't hate early revealing to take that. Like, you shouldn't have control of that spy you do. Benny operative goes up in value significantly with that spy there. What else is there of value to do? You are first to reveal in theory. Do you think anyone else is early revealing here? I don't think so. Wadib isn't. Gurney's got his ring, he's going to use it. And Margot's got faction access. I think you can take any action here and know you'll be fine. Might go Arakeen or Refinery. Yeah, I think I think you can afford to take an action here. We'll put in the two troops. Charging a price here. 
Question is, is what's Gurney going to do? Does Gurney blast off here? He is threatening research station. It is scary for Muad'Dib. Surely he's just got to go siege here and just put it in with his two daggers and just guarantee. Muad'Dib surely has to win this. This is such an enormous combat for him. And the spice he can then send uh, to spice refinery uh, with contingency to give him some backup there as well. I, I don't see how Muad'Dib doesn't go siege and just get it in here. If you put it all in, how can Gurney Halleck ever get involved here? I don't see any of it. It sucks to not use Diplo, but I think this is just too important. I assume that's what we'll see here for Mystic. I, I can't see coming to any other any other particular kind of logic here. Whoa. Wadib doesn't. He is beckoning Gurney Halleck to blast it in at research station. Or maybe he's thinking, well, if he goes Arakeen, I can win it with contingency. Wow. That's pretty sick. If Gurney pulls his dagger, he doesn't. He pulls Watermaster. That's a bad draw for him. It's not what he wanted to see. Well, it's all going to go in here. So Mardi figures he'd rather save the troops and use contingency. I think I would like to have kept the cash personally. Man, that's pretty bold. But, you know, and that's pretty risky. If Gurney Halleck's got a battle intrigue as well, like, you're toast. Very risky for Mystic, but it's going to work out here. Back to Margo. Four persuasion in hand. Seek allies. You feel like you've got to use it. Margo could still, like, upset everything with Spice, but I can't see her using it here. Surely you'd wait for a combat that pairs you and, and look to commit it for that. I assume she just goes secrets. We have seek allies and kind of works out from there. She does. Manipulate is pulled. Huge. That's a big card. I, I think I'd be using that for Benny Operative here immediately. You want to keep that away from your alarm. That's very scary. That's a huge pull. I think I think you have to. You've got to get that away. It's so big for Irulan, and it's an obvious target for her. It's it's faction access. Oh, but offers to give it away. So this is a huge start for Frank here. There's the two swords from Wadib. Contingency surely is coming. He's got two. Make a keeper. I would assume his gums here and does. Corinth City comes off here. But Margot can't get it. It's too expensive. She's only got full persuasion. Unless she's going to switch off her spies to take it. I don't know. Oh my god. Overthrow comes off. Oh, no way. Wow. Lucky boy. So now he's going to use the spies and manipulate to get overthrow. Wow. That's so insanely lucky for Margot. That is absolutely cooked. Absolutely cooked. Ridiculous. So, Lux into Overthrow. That is insane. They pull Leverage, which is not a great contract for them, truthfully. But, wow, that's that's an insane, insane pull. How much are they going to come to define this match here? Utterly insane pull. He was, yeah, I mean, there was a degree of like, holding on to it, and if a big card comes off, I can throw the spies off. But, I mean, for it to come off is, like, still absurd. All right, well, here we go, then. So, what's going to happen here? Surely Muad'Dib's playing his daggers. Muad'Dib to not use contingency seems completely absurd here. H is trying to trying to play around a little bit here. Oh my god! So Mystic passed! Hey Marco does use Spice's power! Oh my god! How is Marty not using these swords? What is happening here? You've got to use the swords now. This is this is a car wreck. And then that does come the swords. Marco's been had here. It's so unlucky. How does Mystic Gamer not play the swords there? Does he really think? Margot has something? That is wild. Well, insane. So Mystic wins it. Margot throws Spice's power and he gets second place. H only gets the two Spice. 
Stuchy's so plotting for Margot as well. What a crazy combat that was. What just happened? And Frank gets in two troops and gets nothing in that carnage. Whoa. Is that an overstep? Man. Absolutely cut. I mean, Mystic won it in the end, but he's he's managed to get Margot to friend Spice's power in that fight, which is an insane result. I cannot believe that's happened. Spy on the Arakeen spot, which is going to get in Margot's way, of course. Mardi pulls Charney. That's why he wants to keep the troops, is because of Charney. I think that's what's, what's going on here. But what an insane way that went down. That was crazy. <coughs> oh, sorry. Wow. So round three is Spice Freighters. Gurney really wants a piece of this, but his hand is atrocious. Wadib can just chuck in worms here. And he might do so. He might just throw Charney in at uh, Hagger Basin and just take the intrigue and just worm this. And I don't see what anyone else is going to be able to do about it. Like, you feel like he just takes it down. He's then also threatening going to Imperial Basin and getting the spice, like, hard way. Like, you think that's what Mardi would have to do, right? I can't see how he goes to, like, uh, one of the basins without putting a worm in to, like, try and get the victory point. I mean, double bump's still pretty good. You feel like he's played for this, sort of, with Charney holding it back to give himself options. Surely you just haggle and just chuck it in here. It gives him free units as well. Oh, he's... Oh! <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, he's getting... He's getting the... Uh, he's getting himself a sandworm. There's a button up there. You can do it manually. Yeah, I was going to say. Surely he has to get the sandworm here. Like, it'd be insane not to. So this does give him an intrigue. Uh, Charney is free units, so that does include sandworms. So he does get access to the Intrigue. And surely... Can't see him. He doesn't win this. Finds the Desert Mouse matching conflict, which is not helping him right now. But it is a spice that he could donate to get a victory point. And Wadi's going to get another Intrigue as well. Bear in mind, because now he's got Worms in, so... This is a pretty all-over-the-place match at the moment. Gurney's in real trouble here. He's not pulled faction access. I think Gurney Halleck has to strongly consider gather support and uh, using the water to re-garrison, take the water so he can get to Deep Desert. I think if, if Gurney Halleck loses Deep Desert, it's... it's How does he recover here? It does mean he's not going to have access to shipping... But I think this is the only move I can make sense. And he does see it. Yeah, Deliver Supplies is a tricky old spot. But it is useful in a pinch. Shouldn't be forgot about. Margot's got double daggers in her ring. But the Arakeen Spy is now blocked courtesy of Mwadi. And as we've seen before on this channel. That can make life really awkward for Margot. Considering she's got no access to Cedar Research Station. So... She's best she can do here is to put it down next to her here. And then just... Uh, or might just go there just to block a little bit for later on. This is also fine. But Swordmaster will be coming. And suss it out from there. I guess Irulan just goes to deliver supplies with spacing. Or might decide to do something else first. Goes frame kit first for the siege access. Whether they'll use it or not, however, is another question. So what does Mardeep want to do here? Mardeep's got to make sure that he wins it. But he should be fine. Gurney can't have a battle intrigue. Sure, he would have used it last round if it was anything he could have used. Spice's power is gone. So it's hard to see him having a battle intrigue. Mardeep just blocks up Siege and just, uh, just gets in the way here. Paul's make a keeper. It's decent persuasion for him. Not really necessarily the card he wanted, but it gets him to seven. So Corrupt City is largely coming in. There's a big start here from Wadeep. That's how this has gone down. I mean, putting in the troop can't be bad. Overcommitting here is fine. 
you're a little bit worried the fact Margot has got a couple of intrigues, and she already, but she already spices powered, which means A, it doesn't exist, but B, it could be a wild card over there. Gurney just builds up the spice. He's going to look to try to do deliver Deep Desert anyways, I guess, next round. Just build up some resources. But it's a bit slow here for Gurney is my concern. This is all taking time for us. And now he's kind of getting out of order for the uh, Swordmaster here. There's not a lot he can really do about it. Didn't draw the access. Trying to work out where to put the troops in. Knows that Margot probably has a dagger. But it turns out she's got two. But, you know, an uprising, the combat rewards are uh, better than they normally look. So, I don't hate Gurney putting a couple of troops in here. He's going to get at least the spice back. It's hard to see how Irolar never comes over the top here. I think putting in one is fine. I, I think all decisions make sense. Decide to stay out of it. Happy to just give it away. Swordmaster for Margo. So ring in hand for Frank is a little tricky. You could ring and trash out your dagger, but you've got spacing guild's favor, and it's kind of hard not to just play that to deliver supplies and just get that point. You got five persuasion otherwise. You could like maybe go assembly hall, trash the dagger, try to get the Corinth. Or goes Arakeen, that's the other way of doing it to get the deployment in. Gonna go for the water here. I assume the dagger will go and does. So he's just gonna go for a decent persuasion here. Go after Corinth City. Unfortunately, Wadib's gonna beat him to it though. Doesn't need to put in both troops. One is fine. So Mwadib with seven will take Corinth almost certainly. Gets the intrigue as well. Kov looking very, very strong here. Tactical option is Paul. That's actually huge for him here because he could even consider using this to save a couple of troops. Mm, this could be interesting. He'd have to play Desert Mouse now for the spice and surely has to. Just basically turns Desert Mouse into a point. Seems seems the move. Surely you got to take Corinth City here. I don't see why you go for really anything else. Maybe ecological to pair with Charney. But Corinth City is just such a good card. Hard to turn down a VP point generator and give it to someone else. It seems kind of ludicrous. Especially it seems likely Irulan might well have access to it. Oh dear. Well he took it. It's the right call. It's peeled off Stilgar for Irulan here. Good grief. Interesting to see if Mwadi will use tactical option here to, like, save a couple of troops. I think it's hard pressed for him to do so. Gurney with free persuasion. It's not the best of rows, truthfully. Might go for maybe, like, wheels and wheels. Might not buy anything. Ooh, it doesn't buy anything at all. I would have at least considered wheels and wheels just for a little bit of spy generation. Not gonna lie. You've also made progress on both tracks. Uh, I think I would have taken wheels there. I think I would have... Uh, I think I would have liked that. Just to give you some options here. Gurney's in a bit of an awkward spot here. Very uncomfortable. Like, wheels you're going to get some value for, surely. Don't know. I think, think I would have picked it. That's just me. You know, this is this is the early days of Uprising. A lot of people view this game very differently. It's not like, you know, the back end of Ximo where... Kind of things are a bit more established. A lot of folks have a lot of different views about how this game should and shouldn't work. So, anyways, back to Margot. She is completely resourceless. She kind of would like to make use out of leverage, but she needs to get hold of the spice. If she can get a Ben and Jesuit bump, remember Margot can get two spice, so she can actually take a Benny bump at some point and use that to get to get leverage, which is quite a nice little move. So, could go Assembly Hall, but you're probably giving up the water. So, just goes to accept contracts instead, which I think is the better move. Paul's convincing, which is our last card. Seems good to me. Stilgar for... Oh, no. And now Margot finds a way into public spectacle. That is two insane draws for, for her that have been peeled off in front of her. Overthrow and public spectacle. That is absolutely cooked. Is Marco Fenring favourite to win this match? Wow. I mean,
mean, Margot's going to... And with Street Stop Pie, Margot Fenry is going to think that they, they should win this match. They're going to be sitting there thinking, I've got overthrow and public spectacle in the first three rounds. Like, I absolutely should be fair. Why did I not put that spy on the Bene Gesserit? Is what they're probably thinking. And never mind. Wadi takes the combat down. Gets two bumps to take the... Surely just take the Fremen Alliance and get and just take the extra water you'd imagine. This is what you'd normally see. Gets one hit of Spice for the point and obviously will get the dagger as well. So Paul, you know, also feeling pretty happy about life. But it's going to be down to him to try and close this out. Margot Fenring is going to have a very powerful late game here. So he's going to have to try and keep on top of this and front run this game. Next up is Trade Dispute. Massive worm conflict this as well. One of the best ones. What on all spots. Why did he refine Charmy? Anyways, Gurney's up first though. So I suspect he's, yeah, deliver supplies makes sense. He's got Fidakin, um in hand as well. He can use his ring, get six persuasion. Uh, Fidakin will give him the water back. He also has the Fremen Bond for, uh, for Watermaster. Well. So this is a huge hand here for Gurney Halleck, actually. Really nice spot for him. He's going to be laden with water. Margot finds overthrow, high places, and Diplo, but has no resources. I feel like Secret is the move, because you can turn that into leverage. And I think you actually kind of want to use it here. There's a couple of decent contracts up here as well. Spice Refinery is pretty solid. High Council is something you think that you're probably going to want in this game. Like, Margot's supposed to play a very heavy faction game and find a Spice Refinery on, on the side. Not going to be able to get to Espionage. Because Irulan's going to have Benny Operative because it's not been seen yet. So Nose is in hand and it's going to be an obvious place for her to go. So I think you just go Secrets and take the two Spice, leverage it and grab like the Spice Refinery contract or something. I think it can't be bad. Could go Frank it. With overthrow to get hold of Seek's access, but you can't actually get there. It's a little awkward. I think it's 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 either this to Frank here or just Diplo to Secrets, but the size is going to go aggressive here. No, it's going to be fighting for this alliance, so get stuck in here. Wow, Paul's back by Choen, by the way. That's actually pretty useful for her. That's going to be oh, that's going to be handy. So it does take Spice Refinery. Is going to go in front here. So War declared on Irulan saying that we're going, to, we're fighting for this Bene Gesserit alliance. I've got position on you. I'm on your right side. You're not going to enjoy life. Mm. So Irulan's going to have to decide pretty quickly what to do. I think you've just got a espionage and working out from there. Kind of wants to go with Spice Refinery. For the Swordmaster, but I think recognizes they're just gonna have to start hitting uh, hitting away here at Espionage. Oh, it was green with the bumps, my apologies. But it's still gonna be tough for Irulan here to try and get too much out of this. So just spying up Bene Gesserit and Spacing Guild seems fine to me. Yeah, I think I actually that might be better. Obviously, trying to get to Spice Refinery here is the is the idea. Trying to give options of that later on. But I don't know. It's a bit tricky. I, I think both options are fine. Pause the ring again with Diplo. So kind of a little bit tricky. Siege again from RD. He's just going to keep jamming this. Knows that Irulan wants to get there. Is Mwadib going for Desert Tactics, you think, here? And then retreat with Charney. Could see that. Gurney, obviously, with the ring. Should put this all in, I think. I think you got to charge a price. First or second place are both pretty good, are both decent for you. And it gives you your six. So I think, yeah, I think this is this is the right call. I like um, I like putting them all in here. You're going to be laden with resources. You're going to have like 14, 15 spice hits. Absolutely insane. Unfortunately, it's not a matching conflict for you, but later ones can still be. Got to charge a price. Margo would just frame kit. Yep. 
Paul's public spectacle. Remember, her spy is down on Siege. And she can't get access to that. Public spectacle is not usable. This is the tricky bit. This is the thing with Margot. When you don't have the Arakeen spy, you're forced put in places you can't necessarily access. And public spectacle cannot be used here. Has no access to that um, to that spy. Siege access can't be acquired. And likewise is not going to be able to get the research station either. So probably this is going to be revealed here for the spy. Which isn't a disaster. But obviously you want to use that more often than not. Irulan's going to go Desert Tactics. Feels that she's got to get stuck in for the combat here. Has to try. But knows they can't win. So after just trying to get hold of a place here. Figure they're going to get the water back. Minimum. Try and get the extra trash. It's also extra espionage uh, material if they can get the loose spice as well. A bit awkward from Wadi, who I do think was eyeing up Desert Tactics there. He's got both his swords. The only way you can get involved, though, would be to, like, Charney and Research Station and get the value out of that. Other than that, not a lot else you can really do here. And it feels so bad to give all these daggers away for nothing. I think Research Station's okay. It's aggressive, but it's not matching combat for you. But you are going to get the water back, though. I don't know. It's, bit it's very awkward, this, for from our deep here. The alternative is you just send Diplo to Dutiful and then you have no reveal. Like, all these daggers and challenge reveal do nothing. I think you've got to try and make something out of this hand. Dutiful doesn't feel great. There's money at Research Station and there's High Council, which I don't think he's ever going to. So it'd be Research Station contract, which kind of commits him to that when he wants to start spending in... Uh, worms. He, of course, he could just go Hagger Basin. But the problem is, Charney will not be able to generate enough units for the uh, for the spark, for the intrigue. But he might decide, so be it. The double water is too important here. And he's probably right. Margo's never getting involved. Like, you think you just go Hagger Basin, like, you're making water by going Hagger Basin, which is absurd, really. Hagger Basin and just putting in your troop and the worm with the two daggers behind you. And you've got tactical option as well if you want to. It can't be bad. You think you're probably getting second place. Arakeen's it for the draw. Wow. I did not expect that. What's he trying to pull? But he's pulled his ring and he's pulled Maker Keeper, which are two cards he did not want to see. He wanted those next round. Well, I'm not entirely sure what Muad'Dib was trying to pull there, but... I feel like... I feel like if that was his choice, that he's... It's gone wrong. Man. I guess he was looking for Corinth. To try and get the money for Swordmaster. That must have been what he was after. Well, he's missed it. That was a real gamble. And it has not worked out. That's gone horribly wrong for him now. That's the problem. If you pull it and you don't find Corinth, you're in real trouble here. Gurney reveals for his variety of things. Free persuasion, full persuasion, takes wheels, which he probably should have taken last round, but never mind. Pulls off the other Bene Gepard operative here, which is pretty insane. Margot could have a ton of persuasion if she's willing to like, reveal puppet specs, put a spy down. She could then pull them out of high places. The problem is, I think she only gets to. One, three, six, seven, eight persuasion. So there's no there's no going to assembly hall. She's only got seven in the hand. She can't go assembly hall and guarantee that she's she could do that and make a spice was flow. That would be a nice option, but it's not really a thing. Not entirely sure what Margot is gonna do here, truthfully. Very few options. It's it's Hagger Basin except contracts or uh, or cheap council, so few options available. 
Is there a world Marga reveals early? To get access to a specific card? Is there any interest in maybe like uh, in delivery agreement here, perhaps? Does she think she could ever get that actually cashed in? She could go priority contract actually as well. They're both out there, both the contract cards. She's got one. Spice of Finery, she can probably do. Sado Kashi has access. Very conceivable she could go for it. It's only, what, round four? She's got strategic stockpile to bear in mind as well, which the contracts will probably help with to some degree or another. But you've only got public spectacle and overthrow. Is that maybe getting involved in too many things? Should you just stick to what you've got and rock and roll with that? Not an obvious spot here for Margo. No way of getting involved in the conflict. The other problem she's got as well is she'd love to be able to make some money here to use Bat by Choam. Unless she's going High Council. Margo Fenring is going early High Council here. Margo Fenring's going for the Spice Must Flow. So now Irulan has got both Benny operatives, which is a bit awkward actually having both, truthfully. Heart, you know, a lot of, but I mean, the thing is one could obviously like fund off the other. So it's actually maybe not that bad. I mean, I'd rather have both than not. But it's going to make Irulan's deck a little bit weird. A lot of these spies aren't going to be used for access. They're going to be used more or less just for revealing, for trying and buy some stuff later on. Again, Margot should have got the espionage spy. And this is allow this is allowing Frank to be able to do this. So Wadip has to reveal. He's got four persuasion and a couple of daggers. I don't know if he's going to use tactical option here to win this fight or not. I don't suspect he will. But who knows? Just takes truth trance. Just a solid diplomacy replacement. Margot, I assume, is pulling spies for the... Uh, is just pulling for for this, yep. Just going to pull for the Spice Must Flow here. Desert Power does come off on the road, by the way, which is a very strong card. So Margot, I think, is going to largely try and not really get involved in this game anymore and just play mainly faction. So it's going to pass all around here. Don't see Mwadi playing. I think he'll happily take second place here. Gives him deep desert access. Does he really need the, the contracts? I wouldn't mind the pair, truth be told. That could be valued later on, but I can see him trying to keep on a desert of uh, tactical. I'm not surprised. Going out with 15 spies in round four. That's pretty wild. Okay, off to round five then. No world conflicts yet. There it is. There's our first one. Siege of Arakeen. It is a fop to match, by the way, which means that uh, Margot has a little bit of extra intrinsic value in trying to get involved here, but her hand is hideous. Hand is absolutely atrocious here. Arakeen's going to be a... F or it's going to be a forced move. Yeah, yeah. All horrible here. Could go Spice Refinery, actually. She does have the contract for it. Which I think does make Spice Refinery a better better, uh, better option, actually, here. Because she's got the contract specifically. Needs to try and draw some... Uh, try to draw things. Ring is just turning up in awkward spots here. <laughs> I mean... That feels good, doesn't it? Here comes Steelgar. We'll take the Alliance. I assume this is all going in here. Pretty much. It will be going in, I think. Yeah, I don't think he's pulling that back. So Wadib does have Corinth, but it's obviously a bit late. He's got Maker Keeper. It is fully online. He's got two, uh, two influences with both Ben and Jessera and Fremen. So it's a spice and a water on top. I mean, going Arakeen doesn't seem bad. Could also go Siege and blow the wall. He's the only person with hooks still. 
Wardeep could look to do that. Does he, he? There's no way he. The, he's no way he can play Corinth here to get the money. I don't think. So surely you've just got to reveal it. Mardib is not a bad option. Mardib could legitimately go seek to blow the wall and uh, start getting involved at Deep Desert and Hangar Basin. No one else has hooks. No one's got any spies there. Arakeen is fine. But I feel like Siege might be a bit more incisive here. I feel like Siege and blowing the wall is the better move. I think Mystic's going to agree here. He's going to get to one of these worm spots if he wants to worm this conflict. Not bad on the worm as well. Even second place. Eight Slari, a couple of troops. He's going to get a lot of water here. Gets one from Siege. He gets one from the card as well. So he can afford to go aggressive here. And it's going to make life very difficult for anyone else here. It's going to force Zero Land surely to feel like they've got to commit more troops. Wall does go. Seems, seems the right move here. And again, you're keeping everyone else at worms here. Like, Wadi has just hit Siege every single time. He's just, just hoarding these hooks. Gurney's just going to ship, obviously, to get his access to his Swordmaster. Why does he bump here? I actually don't mind bumping the Emperor here to give yourself some privilege access in the future. I quite like that. Yeah, I, I like this. I think this is a. I think this is the way I would go. Fop two, you can of course look to exchange out as well. You don't need to. You might even go Imperial Privilege first and not even go Swordmaster here. I don't know. He's got Watermaster in his hand. Unfortunately, no Fremen Bond around, which is a little awkward. Calculus of Power is also in hand, but he's got no Spies. So, can you see what his next move is going to be? He might go Privilege first. We'll see. Mar goes up. Overthrows in hand feels pretty good. Could go Secrets. Do you ever go do for service here and commit yourself to the um, things? No, just going to Espionage and just take the Alliance. I guess if um, if Irulan's not there, I guess you kind of have to. So we'll take the alliance with the double bump. Paul's um, kind of you can't see it properly. Paul's distraction here. It's a pretty nice intrigue actually. You get if you deploy through, we can put a spy wherever you want. That would be really bad news for Irulan if she ever put that on the uh, on the Bene Gesserit spy. It means that Irulan would not be able to replace it. Not a surprise to see that. I do think Margot is eyeing up going for the uh, going for the contract cards out here. They're both out there. So Irulan now has problems. Irulan, if she wants to win it, has to put in more troops. Do you go Hagga Basin here to pay for Spacing Guild's favour? Nope. Gonna go Research Station. Gonna go research station looking for a Benny operative to uh, try and pull Spice Must Flow. It's exactly what she does here. So Irulan's going for everything here. Yeah, awkward, a little bit awkward for, what, for her because obviously Mardib's threatening a variety of things. I figure she's just going to go Hagga Basin here. It is correct. So, a couple of points coming here for Irulan, you'd, you'd think, basically. There is Swordmaster Gurney. Not interested in Privilege just yet. But there's worlds. There's a lot of worlds. He doesn't get an action here. Arakeen could well go here. Like, Margot can go Arakeen a lot here with her ring. If she's got not any, she hasn't got any of her faction access. She does have the faction access. So, what does uh, Margot want to do here? Deliver supplies looks pretty good. You want the water for stockpiling, right? Or you want the water for your spice. Could also go Imperial Basin and just put the spy down. Decides to do it this way around to just guarantee the point here. The spice must flow. So, point for Irulan. Wadib... Is going to have a reveal of four and his money. So his sword master's coming up. Is he bi-ecological and just tribalize Fremen here? 
I feel like that seems seems a good move to me. <laughs> Sneakers come for a, uh, a little look. Ecological would be a card. Could also go um, prepare the way for the draw. I think both are okay. Depends how you see it. So we'll just take the cash. So Gurney is going to be able to play. Um, is going to be able to play Watermaster. I assume he's playing Watermaster. Or does he play Calculus to Trash Dune? I don't know. I guess you play Calculus and hope that maybe you peel off your Fremen card. Yeah, I think so. I think Calculus. I would probably prefer to play to Trash Dune at this point. And you might fluke your uh, other Fremen card, which would be a huge result. No, no highliner. Doesn't have the access. Didn't draw it. Obviously being friend at all times. No, doesn't pull the Fremen. Pulls a dagger though, which he can trash, which I imagine he'll do. No, he trashes the recon. Figures he's got loads of uh, the same access. Yeah, I guess, I guess that I'd probably, that makes some sense. Does he decide to get involved for some money here? The money's not bad for him. You know, does pay for some privilege access, but sides not worth it. Spice so flow for Margo. Leaving them and Wardeep tied. I think Wardeep will play tactical to get second place here. Margo's just, by the way, has just pulled Spring the Trap, by the way. And this is a pair. Oh, and Wadip hadn't taken his intrigue. True and Profits has found. Margo could spring the trap here and try and take this down. It's a matching conflict. But decides not to. Yep. Wadib is going to play the swords here. Margo's second chance to play spring if they want. It's a matching pair. I, I don't hate doing it. Yeah, it's it's tempting, isn't it? It's very tempting. I feel like you probably should. You've got to take the pair when it's there, right? You take this now. You don't need to do conflict like ever again. Do you need the spies where they are? No, it decides against it. So Margo is hoping to basically use that to win a tier three. They now know that she's got a big power power card. Those bricks. Um, Probably has a suspicion there's a spy one of some kind out there. But turns it down. He's going to bank on a winning a tier 3 fight here. I don't know. I think given the way her deck is, I would have been tempted to just pull it off, take the point, and then just focus on factions. Would have got you to 6. Pick up free friendship. Spice for slow gets you to 10. Steve shoots not polling as well in the back pocket. I don't know. I think I would have been really tempted to fire off there. But she's also got public spectacles, so it's it's a bit awkward, yeah. Gonna do it this way anyways. So, round six now is Basin Fight. Obviously no walls. It's been taken down. Margo pulls Benny Access, but the problem is Margo is now dying on action economy. Or well, not, uh, uh, Irulan here. Irulan, of course, committing themselves... This way and that way meant that they have not yet made an attempt to get all of their Swordmaster. They don't have two persuasion with the Bene Gesserit, so prepare the way isn't drawing. They've got two cards they really want to use. Still guard you think you want to be using here. Still guard does not get any buffed with anyone. They have nine persuasion on hand because they've got two spies down. It's a matching conflict for them though. Man, it's how do you how does how does Irulan not get involved here? Surely Irulan's gotta get stuck in. But they know that Wadib's could well come after them. And knowing that Charney is gonna probably be about in their deck, they've got all license to. So I think Irulan's gonna just blast in here. Yeah. Just put it put put them in. Not surprising. But his actual economy business is tricky. Irulan finds convincing. So they're still at 9 persuasion. Wadib goes high council first. Interesting. I guess they got a ton of money. It's somewhere that 
you know, other people might want to go. Go need just espionages. Yep. He's getting the spy ready for future highlines. Is this a combat? How can would have a highline? He does have the access to it now with with um with uh, wheels and wheels. It is spy access, so I don't know. Margot needs friendships and needs resources. So I has to go base in here to take the supplies. It's not enough to get to Sada car though. She is short. Yeah, Irulan's going to feel they just got to keep the uh, the point here. I'm not surprised. They pull questionable methods, by the way, which is huge intrigue for them. Marty, um, just, uh, yeah, Swordmaster pulls his Truth Say, which is his last card, so one of those isn't doing anything. Gurney continues the shipping. Margo, I assume, is just going to go dutiful here and just take the double bump. Does she take the High Council contract? Remember, of course, High Council can be revisited um, in this game. It'd be too Solari for a load of resources. I don't hate that. I actually don't hate taking the... I, I don't see how you're getting a research station here. Ever. Ah, they don't want to redraw. They don't want to redraw their hand. But they're going to have to if they want to use public spectacle. It's because they've got high places. Yeah, I think you got little choice. It is what it is. What are you going to do? Obviously, you wanted to see public spectacle again, but that's just the position you're in. You've got to take the point when it's there. I think high council, I don't hate. I think is a, a totally reasonable take here, yeah, to, like, respin that. You Maybe you can go back to High Council. Um, five slime, two spice, intrigue, and three troops. It's not the, not the worst. Irulan, we've just taken the other point. No swords. Well, Adib's gonna feel pretty licensed to just blast away here. And he does. So he gets, he's gonna get two intrigues here. <laughs> There is a bit of a problem with the way the, the zones are in here. It's a bit tricky sometimes to grab the troops. Well, special mission is um, going to be handy for him. Gurney. Is Gurney blasting? Gurney Halleck is blasting. Wow. This isn't a matching conflict for him either is the thing. Wow. And there's some questions being raised. What is Gurney doing here? He feels he's behind. I don't feel like putting it all in makes any sense. Yeah. It seems a crazy combat to just fly in like this. I don't know. It's a big denial to your opposition. It's a huge blow to Frank if you if you if you go in here. Frank would have to use questionable to win, which would hurt him. So he gets away of it. Margot will privilege. Does she bother? She's got to take some. She, oh my god! Finds overthrow. Oh dear me. Do you just get rid of um, diversion here? Distraction even. You've got no troops in garrison. I think you could get rid of distraction. That's to recall an agent. That is mandatory. I mean, distraction can go. Spring, you should probably keep hold of. It seems crazy to have not used spring the last fight and then scrap it. Seems kind of wild. I can't even give up strategic stockpiling as well. That seems also ludicrous. Like, High Council just pays for that. Might opt to keep distraction, maybe, because it funds Spring. But I don't see how you're getting these troops in. You've got to put in three troops in one go. Or three units in one go. And I don't see how Margot is in any position to get anywhere close to that. Nor I don't think she should really bother at this point. So why would I just use Spring and just take the combat pair? I think I think could well have just done that and called it a day. 
But in any event, I think distraction can go. There's There are other entries you can find that are going to be more useful for you. Picks up Shadow Alliance. Which isn't the worst. It gives a bit of insurance at the Bene Gesserit in case something crazy goes over there. Mardiv gets another entry. Paul's cunning. Just going to put the spy down here. Could use cunning to draw and trash. But he would have to cycle his deck, which is a little, little awkward. So I don't think he will. I think he'll just hold on to that. Tron Province is doing nothing from YD, by the way. He's never getting anywhere near that. So we'll just reveal. Gurney will take the water. He's got four to buy. I don't know if he's going to buy anything here. Maybe tread once on a blue moon? Just for the decent reveal? I don't hate buying tread in darkness here. Two persuasion of swords, not the worst. But we'll go ecological. Oh, dear. I mean, this is absolutely ridiculous. Margot Fenring is going to get Guild Spy here as well. Overthrow, public spectacle, Guild Spy. I mean, this is pretty absurd, this isn't it? This is an absolutely ridiculous run out. What do you do? What do you do? Margot's had like three of the top five cards of this game. And they've all peeled out just before she's revealed. <laughs> Every single one of them. I've, I, I, I've, I've never seen this happen to this extent. It's absolutely insane. How surely Margaret will feel like they'll feel ridiculous not to win this. Anyways, battle pair for Irulan who takes the conflict. Muad'Dib will just take all the resources. He's got seven water, does Muad'Dib, which is ridiculous. Gurney's got five. Margo's the one with stockpiling, and Irulan's the one with free persuasion. <laughs> Oh uh, dear. Okay, here we go then. So first up, it is the Battle of Arakeen. So Red gets the bonus troop here. It's Spy Pulling, which is not wormable. It's the Dagger Conflict, though, which matches both Muad'Dib and Gurney. This is going to be chaos. Muad'Dib's the only person with the worm access still... But he's only got one access to get in there. What does Gurney Halleck... What does Wadib want to do here? What? No, 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 no. No, Wadib. I think... No, I think Wadib's made an error here. Oh, he's going to draw. Okay, it's fine. I think Wadib has to go deep desert to give himself highline opportunities. I think he has to go deep desert. It gets into five spice and try and force his way to highliner. Like, Gurney's got access there guaranteed. Gonna use Charney first, not worried about retreating, just wants maximum. He feels he has to win this fight, and he's true. Has to go deep desert first here to threaten everything. So gets an intrigue, of course, with Charney. Well, that feels pretty good. Although saying that, he's not in a position to really get involved with either alliance, but at least he's got it. Might be of some use further on down the line, who knows? So Gurney can highline immediately if he wants by spending Fopter. This is not a matching conflict for this card. Fopton might have to go, and he might just have to just blast away at Highliner immediately here. Knowing that Wadib's threatening it, and that's exactly what we see here. Yep. Does he pull the spy? Nope, he's going to keep it there to defend. Has to be the right move here. Margot's not got much of a hand. She's just going to take the point and double draw here, I imagine. Yep. Eight points. Just needs to basically just get to nine persuasion and stop piling into the game here. Blue has run like an absolute god in this. There's nothing anyone could do about this. No one's going to be able to catch here. Surely this is just over. Blue has run insane here. Espionage for... 
ear alarm. Does have enough persuasion for spice must uh, for spice must flow. But they need spice. And the problem is they're short on it. Um, they would want the spice to take the bump with the spacing guild. They might have to just hit spacing guild with favor and hope that they um, hope they're good for the spice must flow. But it'd be a gamble. They've got no control over it. But I guess it's, it's a point either way. You might fluke too. Might be left with not much of a choice. Wadi, of course, no high line. It's a battle for second place, you'd think here. Surely this game is just over, you'd think, with the way Margo has gone here. Margo is at 8 Persuasion. So, Assembly Hall ends the game. They could go Arakeen, double spin. Like, Margo can kind of do whatever they want here, truthfully. Could go privilege, cycle out like spring or something. Mark can do again pretty much whatever they want here. Insane run though. So back to Mwadi, what does he want to do here? Tough spot. Very tough spot he finds himself in. Hagger Basin is still open. Surely he thinks he's just got to get stuck in. Yeah, does play Sardo card trying to gamble. Pulls unexpected allies, which is extra combat strength. And he's got the water for it. So he can chuck another worm in here. It's not a bad result for him, actually. And he is threatening research station. So research station, unexpected allies is on its way. Gurney knows he has to commit more troops, of course. Probably just has to go Arakeen. Could use ecological to do it to draw a ton of cards. He's got tons of water here. Probably... Goes there himself and does. But the problem is he's not really generating much in the way of resources. So he's only just drawing a ton of cards here. So four... Uh, he only can put in three. Because of the... He was only able to, uh, um, to recruit one. Which the players are about to mention. Five, six, eight persuasion for Gurney. He might end up going high council. So Margot can go assembly hall... You'd think that's probably over. The, the thing she's concerned about is if someone else is getting to 10. And that is a concern. She goes to Privilege instead. I think she's going to scrap out Spring at this point. So still at 9. Arakeen is always there. So she should be reasonably okay here. Again, remember, she's revealing the Spice Must Flow. So that gives us the Spice for stockpiling. So that's in no danger here. Spring, I assume, just goes at this point. Yep. Didn't get used earlier, so just going to shift it off now. Oh, no. Finds the Chris knife. <laughs> it's the only one she can't match, because the other two are already out. It's pretty funny. Irulan's just going to hide council on Paul, I imagine. Yep. Just trying to draw... I don't see what else you can really do here. Probably will trash the Spice Must Flow to generate, turn it into more Spice. Does it use the Spy? Of course, can't use the Spy because of Benny Operative. Does this make sense? Two, six, eight, nine. Gets 11 Persuasion. Not ideal. You think you just trash Spice Must Flow here to generate more resources. Yeah, it's a bit tricky here. They're trying to work out whether they should pull the spy and just leave Benny Operative to... Um, they can always Benny um, Operative to Espionage, but it doesn't feel the best. So that'll get trashed. So that deals with the spice problem at uh, Spacing Gear. So there's a point there. They can get to 9. There's just no way to 10 that I can see. Mwadi, I assume, is just going to go here and just put in everything that he can. Hopefully, Fluke's a, a Spice Must Flow. Which he does. He does get there. He has nine. 
So it's going to be a point from Wardeep here. I think Wardeep is a little bit disappointed. Like, he had a really, really useful start. It's pretty insane. He's the only person in this entire game who's had hooks. Because he's just gone to Siege all this way. Kind of make you wonder how this is kind of, you know, why... Yeah, you probably might look back at this and wonder how it's not he's not gone a bit better here. Gurney's just got to go out of Keen and just put in the rest of these two troops, right? One. There's no point in using the ring. Ring doesn't help him. He's got no more troops. Oh, he was hoping to pull his, his um, Fremen card, and he actually pings it. So he's actually going to pick up the spice off of um, uh, Water Mask. I guess that's the other reason you do it, is he hoped to fluke a uh, Fremen card, and he did. So, But he had the, the combination anyways. He should have used He should have used, used Water Mask there, I think. I don't know, but then you want the spice, tie breaks. Uh, yes, I guess it's like whatever. Anyways. So Margot kind of wants to go Arakeen. I really don't see any point. What is Arakeen doing for you? What benefit does it have? I would just reveal and just take 10 points. And uh, and call it a day, I think. If you're going to Arakeen, you're only asking for trouble. You know, you're only asking to pull your other Spice Must Flow card. Then what do you do? So just assembly halls instead. Just to pull an intrigue. Finds mercenaries, which is not useful. Crazy game this, isn't it? So Frank's going to get to nine. He's hoping to hold on to second place here, but it's not looking... I don't know. It's looking a bit dicey here. The problem is whoever wins this... Oh, they're only going to get three points. He might hold on to second place here. But Spice Must Flow is coming. Intrigues are still coming. He has no Spice. Mark Opportunity is found. That's just Spice for uh, Mwadeep. That's insane. That's actually Spice tiebreak, basically. But he can't win the conflicts is the problem. I mean, he should just play Mark Opportunity. The problem is, what he's trying to work at is this game about to end. That's what he's trying to identify here. I mean, you should just play Opportunity and just take the spice. I guess. But Gurney Halleck's going to get some spice here. He's going to get... Uh, but he only doesn't score enough points. I actually think this is going to leave Frank with second place in this. Gurney's got no intrigues. So they're not expecting to win. Frank wants Yellow to win because if uh, Gurney wins it, Gurney can only score three on top of any Spice Must Flow. He only gets to eight. So Frank would be good for second. Wadib can only score three. He's got no Spies down. Best result for Frank is that Yellow wins this. And that is what's going to happen. Do they think the game's going to end? They must think it probably is over with that, like, um, you know, the move to uh, Assembly Hall. It's like a kind of a, what, what else are you going to do here? Oh, oh, no, this does give the Spy actually the Gurney. So he actually does accumulate the point anyways. He can put the Spy in where he wants. If he wins, he gets the, uh, he actually gets the Spy pull. <laughs> Didn't even think about that. He's assuming he's not winning it, which is reasonable. One, two, four, five, seven. Oh, oh, he's sure he's not going to supposed to slow. Oh, he had the supposed to slow, but he missed it. Arakeen pulling for steel ten. I didn't even spot that. Now they know the game's over. It's been an absolutely ridiculous run from Blue here. He has run so outrageously well. You know, he's he's done what he had to do, but like. He's had three cards come off for him, like, just right in front of him. It's been kind of ridiculous. So, Blue's going to win it. Frank's going to hold on for second place, which I think he'd be pretty happy with. He had no opportunity to win this match whatsoever. I think second's the best he could ever have done here. Wadib is not going to be able to do anything here. So H is going to have to live with, uh, will have to just suffice with third place. It's the best he could have done. 
And Wadi, nothing he can do here to help. So, a pretty all, pretty wild game, this. It ends with Blue winning, Frank second, H with third, and Mystic with a pretty disappointing fourth. He'll wonder how he didn't get better than this. But it was a pretty, pretty ridiculous game, this. All over the joint. So Did where do, where do we where do we start with this match? Like, I mean, where, I, where, where, really where, well. I mean, yeah, I mean, let's see. Uh, overthrow, spectacle, uh, guild spot. Yellow did a lot of favors for you in this game. It feels like very, very generous. I I wasn't I wasn't Ooh, trying whoa. to do many favors. Absolutely absurd. Jeez. Yeah, but I, I never saw Guild Spy, so this one doesn't really count. Guild, I mean... No, 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 but, but I mean, this one with the intrigue you drew kind yeah, of Yeah, these insane. ones are really sick. It was round two, right? Uh, right? Overthrow yeah, yeah. was that, and then Puppet Spectacle yeah. was like round after or something. Yeah, I, I like genuinely one... thought I was losing this combat, putting it all in as well. I yeah, no, just... me too. But <laughs> when drawing all of these, yeah. Because yeah. you had zero intrigues. I was like, okay, I got to yeah. win this one to place third. But, uh... Not oh yeah, I'd play my only intrigue to guarantee that you don't also highlight it. It was just, oh. Yeah, maybe I missequenced it. I should have maybe cut you. Well, I couldn't cut you off there was, from there was nothing you had that. Done there. That's why I played, I played the spice intrigue and yeah. kept the spy there because I figured yeah. if I can draw wheels, then I can at least get the extra point. Not that it makes mm -hmm. much difference, but. But it also keeps them away from high. No, there was nothing. There's nothing you could really do here, Green. Like you just have to spit intrigues and hope that you got there and you didn't. Yeah, but one mistake I made was when I went last turn, I believe, with Shawnee to Erkeen for some reason. It, I was still... I completely forgot the fact that they just gone here, get a worm. Yeah. It would have been and then a... at least get one intrigue. Would have been. It would have been a little more. I yeah. mean, well, you get the intrigue regardless. It wasn't. It wasn't going to be a winning play. I considered taking uh, one of the previous combats away from Frank just because I was. Almost fighting for second, which is a bit sad, but, mm. but it's kind of the it way was also kind of sad yeah. that I had access to all the worms, but none of them were bumps. It was just all resources. Yeah, it was. It was a straight. I mean, it was weird. Yeah, it's something you had like seven water. You only had five, fifteen spice. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I figured I could maybe win on just spice tiebreaker, but that didn't pan out. Uh, maybe I but... shouldn't have bought Coron City, but. It felt nah, like you, you can't setting not. up for high council. Coron Fee kind of had to take. I think it would have been ludicrous to give that up to someone else. Yeah, right. You know. Yeah. Obviously, kind of obviously, you went for the the spinner Arakeen to try and find it early, and you missed it, and that was yeah. that was a pretty yeah, right. devastating miss. You, you pulled everything mm -hmm. you didn't want to see and missed the one thing you did. Especially the intrigues was kind of bad. What about you, Frank? Happy with second? It feels like second's about the best you could have done here. I don't know. Yeah. I, I got rigged in the first two rounds. I don't know. <laughs> Was absolutely this that I mean I don't like position two already but hmm. like earlier we, I had five by power and yeah it was an awful shot. awful spot that I was really yeah. awkward yeah I don't know was my then, was yeah, my thing, early review no nah, but the thing okay. is, is it's my backup buy right I, I'm considering like either I get this or this right yeah that is the backup you know it doesn't really matter who buy it if, if he buys in high places I get shiny if he Johnny, I get you. Yeah, I, I know. You I mean I had a game the other day. I was in Stabarn. I was like, well, if I take two actions, I'm at risk of like I, I'm in second position as well, and like there's two cards. Mm -hmm. If someone ever reveals, then I'm kind of in trouble. Um, but I mean, like mm -hmm. you, you played what? This is your third year long game this competition, so. Yeah, I mean, the one who plays Erlang in competition, but I mean, the the thing that that it really like just killed me, and I mean, I was so lucky. I mean, it was the right play. I still uh, would say so. That highlighting this, you should probably have not even gone there. I don't know your direct lines, but I mean, try to get the hooks get ready for the next combat. I, yeah, I was sort of trying to make sure I could have the alliance. I figured, yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. I can't get hooks without two more bumps at the front, but I'm not getting that. Yeah. No chance of getting yeah. that. And Wadi was all over Siege all games. Yeah, yeah so I was kind of just using it as a if I wanted to take the combat, I could. I could stock up my garrison. It gives me an alliance when there's overthrow in the game with public spectacle. Um, yeah, that's also, that also my mentality was like you tried you like when siege just to block me, but I was like I was never going there because my game was all the round two thing crushed me. I don't know like playing in uh, this one, going in one two and playing the three spies and trick. It also slowed slowed you down like in considering your start right. 
And no, I, I thought it through, but it was too much damage to everyone else not to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty it was, wild uh, how green doesn't... I mean, I assume green was just sorting anyways, and they didn't, and then that pulled Spice's power. That yeah, was pretty if, wild it, how it that was went really out. wild, because I thought if someone plays an Intrigue, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> But yeah. then there was no intrigue. I play it, and then there was the the swords from yeah. green as well. I was and, and a lot of time, Mystic just, just plays the swords and calls it a day. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty wild. That 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 Look at that. Shadow Alliance in case someone decided to fight against his overthrow. He still had it. Oh, yeah, he, he pulled that late. Oh. He pulled it late. But yeah. But anyway, thanks for the game. Was it wrong to play that intrigue for this one? I no no no. no I, I mean, you, you, I was, you had to take. Really it's such a big conflict wouldn't. for you. That's it's such a big conflict for you. Like you've got to you got to play for that. I, I'm amazed you didn't play it before Spice's power happened. That's that was the crazy thing. And I it got lucky. Fine. The like because yeah, I, I would have been happy I, with the second place reward. I mean, yeah, but it's such a big round two. It's your match. Like it's a spy. You can put it there. The spice is good for you. It counts for water. Mm -hmm. Like it just seems spice refinery is going to drink you money for that as well. Like it seems, I, I, it seems crazy not to take it down when it's a guarantee. Like it seems pretty pretty wild. But it was it was a crazy um, round. Round two was pretty nuts. Yeah, round two was weird. Uh, yeah, I'll be playing Thursday as well, but there's no chance I'll be passing on. <laughs> I mean, I think I've got. Uh, is that? Am I in that? Am I in that game as well? I think so. Maybe. I don't know. I think Speckrape is already. Still... I'm, I'm in. Need, I'm in that one, one. Yeah. You need one win and. and because we're a smaller group it's... anyway, so. Yeah. It's like... Yeah. Well, I don't think I can make it with one, one, like one point, one point, and then I got yeah, last place two different. times and third place one time. It's gonna be. Crazy. I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't know what everyone else has been doing, but. <laughs> I've I've just been falling slowly, from first, second, now third. So I'm projecting a fourth. I mean, um, you know, eleven points and three doesn't <laughs> seem too bad. I have. One, yeah, two. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I'll just play. But yeah, I'm I'm only here for a good time, really. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, it was fun. I thought this game, like I stagnated at these six points. That was my that's where I stopped. Yeah, it was a shame. Like you had a really strong start as well, and it didn't kick. Yeah, up but I hope for more combat because I wasn't really interested in bumping up here or there. Yeah. And I was just hoping to get bombs through combat, but they, you know, it yeah. just said no. And you, you also <laughs> you can't account for overthrow spectacle. You can't. Really, no. You can't account for. No, that I did feel now. kind of bad. Was it wrong to early reveal for Chani? No, it seemed seemed reasonable. Mm, no, I don't know. It was fine. It was fine. It yeah. was just you feel the It's the strategy, right? It, you you do it. You commit yourself down a certain road, but like, yeah, can't can't be yeah. bad to reveal for that. So here's a look at the table after that one. Elise, Group N, very funny poised at the top. Both Frank and H with 11 points from free played. Um, we're feeling pretty decent. Creep only marginally behind, though. Nine points with the game in hand and Nikon not too far behind as well. Um, it is a bit disappointing, however, for Ayasaki. Only points are free, four points from free games, meaning that he is in must-win territory in his final match to have any chance of making his way through to the last round, but can definitely made to happen. Um, and definitely, I think we'll feel disappointed in this one as well. Had a, a fairly solid start here, um, all in all. But I think events kind of a bit did conspire against him, admittedly. Uh, he is true that, like, all the comics came all largely resource-based. Looking to try and win with any kind of uh, combat. So we had double bumps uh, to try and find some victory points with the factions in the end. Uh, only managing two faction points in all. So a uh, very, very difficult spot for him. Um, and yeah, obviously with uh, Margo and drawing pretty, having some pretty strong cards coming in front of him. Very, very powerful indeed. So, you know, pretty, pretty wild stuff. We stopped playing as well. I think Frank will have to feel pretty happy with second. I don't think he could have done any more in this game. I think second's a proved result. Um, and Gurney just couldn't find the extra point to try and find his way into second place. Did what he could, uh, missing his Spartacus Flow draw at the Arakeen. But what are you going to do about that? So that's going to do it for us here in this one. Uh, thank you much for all for watching. Uh, it is good to be doing commentaries again. You know, we have missed it a bit. And the last week or so have, have not been great for me, truth be told. Um, but it's nice to be sitting down, getting on all these. Of course, got more commentaries coming on the channel. Uh, so we keep an eye on those. If you do want to follow them, of course, please do follow, support the channel as best as you can. Uh, we got a Patreon. I got a Ko-Fi. There's all sorts of stuff going on. And, you know, without your guys' support, we wouldn't be able to do this and host these competitions and do these commentaries. Obviously, still a way for me to go as well in uh, learning my way around commentating and uprising a bit more. But sometimes it's, it's hard to know what people are going to do. You know, there are sometimes a plethora of options and it can be a bit hard to determine. But uh, in any event, take care, so everyone. We'll see you on the next conflict.